The following program discusses sensitive issues related to sexuality. Parents are cautioned this presentation may be too candid for younger audiences. Welcome to Intimate Clarity. I'm Jason Bradley and I'm here with Jennifer Jill Schwarzer and she is a licensed professional counselor. And we have a very special topic that we are going to discuss today, a popular topic, and it's a conversation that we need to have. So Jen, is there an ideal foolproof plan when, in, in terms of finding a life partner? Yeah, like a foolproof formula, you follow these steps and you're going to live happily ever after, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, I don't think there is. And I think when we try to come up with these foolproof plans, what it effectively does is gets us to rely on the plan instead of relying on God to lead us. And so it's a risky thing actually to have too foolproof of a plan. But there are some basic principles that we can employ in the process of finding a life, counsel, uh, life partner. Okay, okay. Yeah. And, and what might some of those be? Or, or Yeah, good. I want to unpack that, but I want to talk first of all about how God leads us step by step in our lives to the place where we're ready to find a life partner because actually there's a whole kind of course throughout life mm -hmm. in learning how to love and be loved that and God accomplishes with us. You're married, correct? I'm married, that's okay. correct, and I have two children. Nice. And are nice. you married? I'm not married. I have a girlfriend. Okay. I want to get married okay. one day. That's the goal. All right, good. So <laughs> you're really tuning in on this one. One That's day, one day, yes. That's good. So basically what God does is at every stage of life, he builds our brain and builds our capacity to love and be loved. So it starts with a mother-child, or we call primary caregiver and child relationship. And it's amazing as you study neuroscience and developmental process, you see how impacting that relationship between the mother and the child is in terms of building in that child the capacity for future relationships and for trust bonding. So mother plays such an essential role mm -hmm. as she cares for that tiny infant. And I'm not saying father isn't part of that, but women are especially set up physiologically and psychologically to be able to nurture a tiny infant. Yeah, there's definitely some things that there's, we can't they do don't that have. women. Yeah, exactly, yes, exactly. Yes, those yes, nurturing yes. impulses. And we can feed the baby from our own body. And I've never mm -hmm. known a man that could do that. I, that's that's yeah, exactly what I was talking about. Yes, yeah, yes. Right, exactly. <laughs> so then along comes dad. And about three years old, the child starts to interact with dad more and more and the father really stretches the child and increases the child's capacity for risk taking and this type of thing. So he plays his own special part. And then typically in the life timeline comes siblings. Mm -hmm. And siblings are the first really horizontal relationship we have as human beings where we're actually negotiating and we're resolving conflict and we're learning how to share. and We learn a whole and, new set of skills. And when you say horizontal, you mean like equal? Exactly, on we're on an equal field. plane pretty much with okay. siblings, although there's an age difference usually, but we're not like parent-child, yes. like that kind of authority yes. configuration. Yes. So we're learning more horizontal skills and those skills we use in the next relationship which is friendship building. And that's the first relationship that we develop outside of our family. So it's the first chosen relationship. And we've already developed this whole skill set, and now we're using it on friends. And that kind of relationship prepares us for the next relationship, which is a life partner. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you, if you realize this yet being unmarried, but you know, I can say this as a married person, that what your life partner is, is basically a friend on steroids. I mean, you're, you've got that romantic component mm -hmm. for sure, and, mm -hmm. and they're part of your family, but you're also friends. And most of the time you're interacting as friends and negotiating the way friends do. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important to learn friendship because and maybe you've experienced this if it's all about the romantic attraction, it's gonna burn out sooner or later. Well, yeah, I, I think that, you know, that friendship element is, extremely important because as you get married and then years down the line there's going to be certain things that may fall off like in, in terms of that romance That's or right. in terms of um, you know what if somebody gets into a car accident or something and yeah. they're 
you got to be in love with that person. That's and, right. And that's that right. friendship is so important. That's right. And, and what happens in the romantic phase of a relationship is there's elevated dopamine, which is the pleasure neurotransmitter, <laughs> and actually lowered serotonin, which is the mood elevating uh, neurotransmitter. And there's higher levels of adrenaline in the in love phase of a relationship. But there's no way that you can neurologically sustain that in love state for more than like a year or two. Your brain wow. just—it doesn't have the capacity for it. So you're uh, like kind of like the honeymoon stage that yeah. people talk about. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. And you can you can uh, retain the early affections, but what happens is the feelings tend to lead and the the behaviors follow before marriage. But once you cross the altar, sometime after that, you're going to have to start leading with the behaviors and the feelings will follow. So the feelings can stay alive. They don't have to completely die, mm -hmm. but they're not going to drive the thing forward like they do when you're in the yeah. in love phase. And so. even the Bible tells us that we're not to operate off feelings That's per right. se, but off principle. Feelings matter. So, God yes. cares about our yes. feelings. They count, mm -hmm. but they're not going to do a very good job of leading. Yeah. In especially when you're talking about building strong relationships. There have to be principles guiding that process. So I suggest that because the stakes are so high in a married relationship and so many things can go wrong, mm -hmm. that we choose very wisely. And so I suggest three phases of searching for a life partner and choosing a life partner. Okay. This comes from years of experience and reading and studying. For a long time, the courtship model was very popular. One of the struggles I had with the courtship model, even though I believed it was an improvement on secular dating, mm -hmm. where feelings lead and passions lead, mm -hmm. uh, I think the courtship was an improvement. But one of the issues with it was you went often straight from like not interacting with the opposite sex, hardly at all, or at least not in a very meaningful way, to being in a very serious, committed relationship, a courtship. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's too big of a leap. So. I've inserted a third step, which is really the first step, which is what I call friendship dating. Okay. So what I mean by friendship dating is getting to know a wide variety of people on a friendship level. And you can just really be honest with them and say, hey, you know, I'm just getting to know a wide variety of people on a friendship level. <laughs> yeah, let's yeah. go for a walk or let's go over here and have a, a sandwich or let's go for a cup of tea or something and let's just kind of get to know each other a little mm -hmm. bit. And as long as you clarify that you don't have any serious intentions for that relationship, I don't see what great harm can come from it. Of course, you have to be careful not to be wandering off into dark places where you might be tempted. But, mm -hmm. but you know, mm -hmm. why not have, you want to exercise care about building relationships with the opposite sex, but why be so afraid that you don't end up getting to know very many people and then end up grabbing for any relationship you can find, which I've seen happen. Yes, yeah. yeah. So, so basically you want to lay the foundation at the beginning. Honesty is the best policy. That's right. And just let them know, look, I'm, I'm getting to know people yeah. as a friend. That's right. And, and then see where it goes from And there. as long as you're clear about that, yeah. then you walk away and you still have a friendship. Mm -hmm. even if it didn't lead anywhere else. Yes. So then the second phase would be more serious dating or what we call courtship, where you're actually homing in on one person and trying to see if that person might be an appropriate life partner. And that's a very crucial stage, and I'm going to unpack that a little bit more later. But okay. thirdly is the, you know, the most serious phase before marriage, and that's engagement. And engagement comes when you've courted someone and you've decided that this is the one you want to spend your life with. So mm -hmm. those are the three steps that I would, I would break that down to. I would also encourage you to ask three questions when you're starting to get serious with someone. What are maybe these the three later, questions? Maybe, maybe even the beginning stages of courtship. The three questions are, am I ready? Are they ready? And are we compatible? Because two people can be ready Mm -hmm. And yet they can be incompatible. Okay. So, so uh, yeah. So, so break each, okay. break each one right. of those steps down. So am I ready? Are they ready? There are some deal breakers. You're not ready if you have an active addiction to anything. Okay. You're not ready if you have previous relationships that you don't have closure on. Or previous relationships you haven't really fully healed from. Mm. Because then there's a danger that you're getting involved on the rebound. Yeah, right? and you're bringing baggage you're bringing into baggage with you. Yes, exactly. Yes, yes. You're not ready if you have major financial problems that are unresolved. Mm -hmm. You're not ready if you have no clue what you're going to do with your life and how you're going to make a living. 
there has to be some kind of plan for that moving into, the, you don't have to have all the money and all the security, how can you? You're at the beginning of life, <laughs> yeah. not at the end, but uh -huh. you need to at least have it planned. So yes. there's, those are some of the deal breakers okay. uh, for am I ready, are they ready? You should be a person of decent maturity level for your age. Now you can't mm -hmm. expect to be a saint ready for translation, you know, <laughs> yeah. when you're 25 years old, but you uh, yeah. need to have a decent maturity level and have a track record of being able to have decent, close, bonded relationships. Because after all, this is gonna be the most bonded relationship of your life. Yeah. You're gonna be raising relationship to an art form in this relationship. You have to have at least a history that shows that you're capable of that, of resolving conflict, mm -hmm. of moving through difficult passages, having hard conversations and this type of thing. So you need to be a decently mature person. Then the compatibility issue. Uh huh. That's a, that's a, that's a more difficult one. Okay. Compatibility and sameness are not the same thing. I suggest that compatibility is in three basic areas. Values, gifts, and passions. Okay, so values are the morals and the principles that I live by. Okay. If I believe in pouring my life out in service for God and this person that I'm dating believes in stockpiling as much money as you can and that's what life is for, there's no values compatibility there. I'm, yeah. This is an extreme situation, yeah, but I'm using yeah. it to illustrate. And then gifts, you know, I might be very, very gifted musically. I might have just a wonderful music gift and that might take me all over the world performing. If the person that I'm with doesn't like music and they really don't want to travel or have anything to do with someone traveling, mm. that's going to be a problem. Absolutely. And then passions are the things that really light a fire under us, things that we mm -hmm. feel strongly about, things that we deeply love, things that make us feel good when we do them. Maybe someone, I'll use the same example, has a passion for serving in the mission field. And maybe their person that they're dating or that they're courting has a passion for perfect home decor okay. and loves to wear fine clothing. You know, people have a taste and a talent for that kind of thing but they just love to make their home look beautiful and they love to make themselves look beautiful. <laughs> That's not gonna fly yeah. very well in the yeah. mission field yeah. where you don't even have a curling iron you can plug in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so like, okay, so if somebody's purpose, it's like, okay, let's say you've got person A here, their yeah. purpose is mission work uh, yeah. or, or ministry. And um, then you have person B who is wanting to just get rich and do whatever it takes to get the money. Yeah. They're going to no be, yeah, they're, they're going to be incompatible. And Absolutely. I suggest that if you're really wondering about compatibility, because compatibility and sameness are not the same thing. You, know? uh -huh, you don't uh -huh. have to be alike to be compatible. In fact, sometimes opposites attract and work better together. Yeah. One person's choleric, one person's more phlegmatic, very assertive, very laid back. They're probably going to work together than two, better than two choleric. So it's <laughs> not necessarily sameness. But I would suggest that two things can help you figure out if you're compatible. Okay. Uh, three things, the hard work of thinking through the issues. Mm -hmm. I would say working with a marriage counselor or a pre-engagement counselor is an important thing to do. And I have a list of questions I give my clients that are just very detailed. They ask about everything from whether you believe in this to uh, money, how you manage money, in-laws issues, all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and then I would suggest that people do the hard work of really getting to know each other. Yes. That's really essential yeah. to that process. You know, it's interesting. I read in a book, um, basically, like, people go to school for so long yeah. to get that degree. Yeah. But how long do they put in they the work for a relationship? Building a marriage? relationship. We think it comes naturally. It doesn't. It takes just as much training and schooling and, and hard, critical thinking as the most, you know, developed science that we can possibly study. Absolutely. We go into it just kind of boneheaded. And there's so. so many different variables. That's right, that's yes, right. Yes. So another factor is attraction matters. Do you like this person? Do you mm -hmm. enjoy being around them? That matters too. I don't want to leave wow, that. Wow, yeah. there's so much. <laughs> Look, if, if people, if you want to go get more information, make sure you go to IntimateClarity.tv for more information. Join us next time. We're out of time. See you later. Mm -hmm.